Hi, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today, Josh is going to be stitching out spirals and wiggles in a sawtooth star block. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a second here just to take a look at what you've done so far. You've knocked out the center, center spiral and I gotta say that looks so much better now at month 11 uh, than it did from month number one, block I, number one. I can agree with that. Let's flip it over too. And take a look at the back. You can actually see it a here. Little bit. And you can kind of see the stitching from the back too. Oh, it looks and so much Josh better. And you can, yeah, well, you can see the, out, the out, outbound spirals too. We're also looking much better. Very decent. Much nicer. Uh, a lot more um, ability to stitch on the line, which is terrific. And do you think that you would be able to stitch this freehand now without marks? That is a uh, excellent question because honestly I've not tried, but I think I could. Yes. You think you could now? That's great. That's wonderful to hear. So Josh has knocked out the center. He's stitched also the square and started working around these uh, star points. And you've decided to cheat a little bit again with this block and not stitch these wiggles. Yes, I have. Is there a reason for that? I think it's just, it's a personal preference on this one. I think it would just be too overwhelming and make this block too tight. So one other thing that I've been noticing a lot, and that is your stitch length getting a little longer, and we talked about that in the last video, just, I think it's mostly your hands are just much more confident, and so just concentrate on keeping that movement slower okay. with your hands. Your machine speed's great, and you can speed up a little bit, but this looks much, very controlled, which is great. That's exactly what you want to do going into a spiral. That's the trick with speed control, you know, you got it and you've got that kind of slower speed and maybe you're using the slower speeds a lot and then let's say you reposition your foot on the foot pedal or uh, you're changing from one area to the other you just take a break and, and go get a cup of tea and you go back to it and your foot is resting on the pedal a little differently and suddenly you can't find that speed again so it's one of those things that definitely does take some practice to find this wonderful slower speed that you've been using in this block the way I look at it, you know, especially with the foot pedal, that's a skill that you're going to gain kind of like playing the piano. No one becomes a master at playing the piano overnight, you know. Um, it always takes time and takes practice and really controlling that foot pedal, it's it's very much the same thing. It's, it's a speed control, it's a very fine movement, and it's also an understanding of what how your machine behaves, of how it acts, like this particular machine, how it works, is it the very first couple of stitches, like one or two stitches, the machine slightly pauses as it starts. And sometimes it's easy to overcompensate for that and just mash your foot down on the pedal because you think it's not going. And then it'll just take off on you. And it's because of that's just a little feature within the machine. So let's speed the video up at this point and see Josh stitching through all of these. So we see how his hands move and position the block and work through these areas. stitching spirals in this block since Josh kind of skipped the wiggles. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to note, uh, and Josh asked this while we were kind of doing the speed up version of a uh, part of the video, um, what is the best area to stitch first in those spirals? Should you stitch the outside of the circle first and then stitch the spiral or vice versa? And I really think stitching that whole outside of the circle is a good idea. It uh, kind of solidifies the shape, you have it complete, and then you go inside with the spiral, you don't ha you have less chance of missing like an edge of the circle, something like that. Uh, and also, for me, it makes more sense in my brain. I don't know. And it's, it's a lot easier to travel stitch over the exterior circle because it's a circle instead of uh, a spiral shape. 
So I like, yes, definitely. And that's that's the way it naturally came to me too. So it, it worked out well. Excellent, excellent. So as you can see, Josh has definitely gotten much, much better at free mission quilting through this entire year. And you know, you can get just as good, gain just as much skill with free motion quilting by joining us for this fun quilt along. You can get started at any time, even if you didn't start in 2014, you can get started at any time. Pick up spoon flower cheater cloth fabric like Josh is using and simply baste up the blocks and quilt on the lines. I promise by the time you get this many blocks finished, there's 42 total, you're going to be a rock star at free motion quilting. So you can find that at spoonflower.com. Until next time, I forget what we have to say. What do we say? <laughs> Let's go quilt. That's right. <laughs>